When diving into the science of running performance, the concept of VO2 max is almost unavoidable. Defined simply, VO2 max is the maximum rate that your body can extract oxygen from the air. When you run, that oxygen gets absorbed in your lungs into your bloodstream, gets pumped by the heart and travels to your muscles where it's put to use burning fat or carbs. Everyone agrees about that part. The controversy begins when you start to ask the obvious next questions. How does VO2 max contribute to performance? And what part of the oxygen delivery system, bloodstream, heart, or muscles matters most when it comes to determining your VO2 max? So that's what we're going to examine in today's article by digging into the research. My name is Andy Cazzarelli, and I am one of the coaches here at Runners Connect. Our goal is to help you train smarter and stay healthy with research-backed information and training plans. Personally, I'm a 238 marathoner and former All-American in the 10K at NC State. Let's get into the research. VO2 max measures metabolic power, not running speed. When runners talk about performance, we mean something very specific, speed. If you get an invitation to watch a high-performance 5K, you'd justifiably be expecting to see some fast times. But VO2 max doesn't measure speed. It just estimates your body's metabolic power output. More specifically, it's an estimate of your highest aerobic power when you're running fast enough to hit VO2 max. Virtually all of the oxygen you're consuming is being used to burn carbs for energy. Being able to generate lots of aerobic energy is great, but doesn't guarantee that you'll be able to run fast. To go from aerobic power output to running fast requires converting that metabolic power into forward motion. That's where running economy comes in. Much like a car with a powerful engine but flat tires, a high VO2 max is not very useful if it's paired with poor running economy. For longer events like the 10K and half marathon, there is an additional factor at play, your highest sustainable level of oxygen consumption. Normally, if you try to run at say 90% or 95% of your VO2 max, your oxygen consumption won't be stable. It'll quickly climb to 100% of your VO2 max and you'll soon become too tired to continue. At a lower value, say 70 or 80% of your VO2 max, you'll be able to maintain a stable rate of oxygen consumption over time, and you'll last much longer before getting fatigued. That value, the highest percentage of VO2 max you can maintain at a steady state is your steady state max. Just like runners can have different VO2 max values, they can also have different values for the steady state max, even if they have the same VO2 max. To run fast, you'll need all three factors. One, the ability to produce a lot of aerobic energy or VO2 max. Two, do so in a sustainable way, a good steady state max. And three, efficiently convert that energy into forward motion or running economy. VO2 max in performance in runners. Since VO2 max is only one of the three major factors influencing running performance, it shouldn't be surprising that VO2 max on its own is not a particularly good differentiator of running ability among runners who are already pretty fit. One study on nearly 200 top Spanish level runners found that VO2 max on its own could not identify the best elite distance runners compared to their merely pretty good counterparts. Additionally, Mikey's Breaking 2 project did comprehensive physiology testing on some of the best marathoners in the world, found high but not amazingly high VO2 max values among these elite marathoners. Many of them clocked in at 65 to 70 milliliters per kilogram per minute, even though elite 5K runners can often hit 80 milliliters. In larger and more diverse samples, though, there's no denying that there's a link between VO2 max and performance. A 2021 study of military recruits in Norway, whose 3K race paces ranged from nearly 12 minutes per mile to six minutes per mile, found that VO2 max alone explained two thirds of the variation in performance across the recruits. Clearly, a high VO2 max is a price of admission for high level performances, but doesn't guarantee fast times on its own. Central or peripheral blood and heart versus muscles. The other big controversy with VO2 max is what biological factors determine its value. In principle, any link in the oxygen delivery chain, blood, heart, or muscles could be the bottleneck. Another way of thinking about this question is whether you're limited by oxygen absorption by your blood or oxygen utilization by your muscles. Most physiologists agree that the biggest factor in determining VO2 max is simply how many red blood cells you have. More red blood cells means more hemoglobin and more hemoglobin means you can carry more oxygen in your blood. 
As pointed out in a 2016 commentary article, total hemoglobin alone explains nearly half of the variation in VO2 max across athletes. If you incorporate cardiac output, the maximum amount your heart can pump per minute, that fraction leaps to over 90%. Things only get heated when considering whether blood volume and cardiac output are the only factors that matter. Some physiologists believe the above evidence is convincing, while others argue that a couch potato with an elite athlete's heart and bloodstream would not have the necessary oxygen extraction capabilities in their muscles to make full use of the extra oxygen. VO2 max in practice, increasing blood volume and cardiac output. Regardless of the controversy, one thing is clear. If your VO2 max is limiting your performance, boosting your blood volume and increasing your cardiac output are the most promising strategies. As for how to go about boosting these two factors, the research is less controversial. Both blood volume and cardiac output can be improved with interval workouts that hit at least 90% VO2 max. In practice, that means coming within about 8-10% to of your maximum heart rate or hitting 90% of heart rate reserve if you want more precise metrics. For optimal cardiac output benefits, these intervals should be supported by high overall training volume, padding out your weekly training with plenty of easy or to moderate runs to the extent that your training schedule allows. Specific VO2 max workouts you can implement. Now on to everyone's favorite, the training details. VO2 max for the 5K. Out of the most common race distances, VO2 max is most important in the 5K. While the first portion of 5K training will focus on building aerobic endurance, thinking of this phase as the building the foundation of a house. The last one third of a 5K training plan, however, will emphasize VO2 max workouts. Think of this as the roof. A few excellent examples of 5K specific VO2 max workouts are 12 by 400 meters at one mile to 3K pace with 1.30 to two minutes rest, or 12 by 300 meters at 5K pace with 30 to 40 seconds rest, or five by three minute hill repeats with jog down recovery. VO2 max for the 10K and half marathon. The specific demands of the 10K and half marathon aren't heavily reliant on VO2 max, but it is still an important component to round out fitness. In the 10K and half marathon, you should have a VO2 max workout scheduled every two to three weeks to keep the system in check and support other energy systems, aerobic development, and threshold training. My favorite workouts to blend into 10K training are 16 by 400 meters at five to 10K pace with every fourth 400 at one mile to 3K pace with 60 seconds between reps. Four miles continuous tempo alternating 400 meters at 3K to 5K pace and 1200 meters at marathon pace. And four by two minute hills with jog down recovery, one mile on a flat surface at 10K pace, four by two minute hills with jog down recovery. Now on to VO2 max for the marathon. Unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how much you like long busting interval workouts, VO2 max is not a big component of marathon training. However, it is still useful and important to include some VO2 max workouts and speed work in your training plan every three to four weeks to help your form and efficiency. My marathon go-tos are as follows. Two sets of 10 by 400 meters at 5K pace with 200 meters jog rest and 400 meters jog between each set. Or 20 by 200 meters at mile to 3K pace with 200 meters jog recovery. And last but not least, six by three minutes at 3K to 5K pace with three minutes walk or jog between. So here's your recap. VO2 max measures the highest rate at which your body can extract oxygen from the air. And since oxygen is used to burn fuel for energy, it's essentially a measure of your aerobic power output. Not surprisingly, VO2 max is a huge contributor to running performance, but not the only contributor. To run fast, you need a high VO2 max, the ability to sustain a high percentage of your VO2 max at a steady state, and the ability to efficiently convert metabolic power into forward motion. VO2 max depends heavily on your heart and bloodstream. Most of the differences in VO2 max across different runners are attributable to the total amount of hemoglobin in your blood and the maximum rate your heart can pump blood, so-called peripheral factors, like how well your muscles can extract and use oxygen only contribute a little to VO2 max, if at all. These peripheral factors do matter for performance, but probably via their influence on whether you can sustain a metabolic steady state at a given rate of oxygen consumption. 
Understanding the origins of VO2 max and its limitations as a measure of performance can help focus your training. If VO2 max is holding you back, the best way to improve it is by focusing on workouts that target blood volume and cardiac output, interval workouts with repeats that bring you within about eight to 10% of your maximum heart rate. Thanks for tuning in.